Hi, it's David Salmon here, the cycling granddad, talking about his epic cycle ride from Lasse to Kathmandu via Mount Everest in September 2011. This is part two, Lasse to the Pangala. That's one of the major peaks. Here we are, coming out of Lasse, and here's our first pit stop. And as you can see, the road's pretty flat. Um, obviously, there's a lot of uphills, a lot of downhills, but vast majority of the time, the road is pretty straightforward. Here we are on one of our major downhills, switch back after switch back, downhill all the way. And then, once we get to the top of the various passes, as you can see, we're level here with the clouds. Just look at those clouds. We're as high as the clouds as you can be. And then we get up to the main pass, the Kamba Pass, and as we hit the top, we come across the locals with their yaks, uh, looking to try and sell you a picture of you and a yak, uh, which you don't really need out there, by the way. And then looking down from the pass, we've got the holy Kamdrok Lake, which is so blue uh, when you see it, it's just uh, awe-inspiring to have a look at that lake. And then we then go make a descent, uh, it's time for lunch, uh, so we'll get down to the bottom, right by the lake, and here we are, uh, just at ground level, uh, taking into account the uh, scenery of the hills and the lake, etc. And then, when it comes to cycling in Tibet, you just can't get lost, you just keep going. Just have a look at some of these roads, absolutely straightforward, cycling into the distance, scenery either side and straight in front of you, can't beat it, and hardly any traffic. At the top of the pass, here we are, and uh, a lot of activity always on the top of the pass with uh, prayer flags and people milling around and chatting to each other, etc. Then uh, we're looking good for a good, great downhill. So here we go, and uh, looking at that downhill. So look at that hill going down, the snaking round to the left, and then down, and then round, and whatever. So. As you can see, hardly any traffic whatsoever. Base camp, it's now time to relax, so our tents have been all pitched for us. Time to sit out there with a nice cup of tea and relax by the uh, lake that we're next to. And uh, take into account a nice relaxing day of riding through the Himalayas. Now, as we're cycling along, you might just see that little castle right in the middle of a lake. So, how the heck did that get built? Obviously, nature's taken its course, and um, the the river has, or the lake has uh, flooded it out. Typical farmhouse in Tibet. Very, very straightforward farmhouse in Tibet. There we go. Walls, roof, straightforward. Nothing, uh, unusual, nothing uh, elaborate about them. Here we are arriving in the uh, Tibetan town of Gansi, and uh, it's one of our first hotel stops. Here's the hotel, very large, grand type hotel. And then we then pop round the corner to the Kumba Monastery, which is literally a, a few minutes uh, ride around the corner, or you could walk it. Uh, it's not very far away. And we look through the two temples there uh, of, of this monastery. You've got that one on the left, and you've got the one on the right and um, you can walk all the way up on the one on the left for just a little bit of money, not a great deal, all the way to the top, prayer rooms in every single um, doorway and then we walked back along the high street of the town and as you can see, yeah, quite grand high streets there but um, all the various shops along the way mainly small retail shops etc. Here's the entrance to our hotel, so a, great, a lot of marble very grand Chinese type architecture. Then it's off to work, Tibetan style. So here we go on the open road, horse and cart, taking everybody, to, taking the whole family off to the fields to work for the day, and that's pretty typical uh, way of getting around. And then it's welcome to our town. Now every single town we went through in Tibet, there was this little fiberglass policeman welcoming you to the town and then saying goodbye to you once you came out. And it's basically to make sure that you're behaving yourself in entering the town. And the architecture with regard to the agricultural buildings, this is a typical farmhouse again, made out of, uh, of clay, uh, cow dung, you name it, it's all put together to make little bricks, etc. and to put them together. Then we looked at this uh, monastery and used by the Dalai Lama on regular occasions. I'll just leave you with a few photographs of this for the time for a minute or two, just for you to take into account the 
awesome splendor of uh, Buddhist architecture and uh, their temples. And their various artwork. Then it's back to our second hotel. There's just the entrance to the outside. Then it's back on the road, and we discovered how to boil a kettle of water without any gas or electricity, just using the sun's rays. Here it is. It's a bit like a satellite dish with a kettle on the top. Sun rays capture the uh, captured by the dish. Dish then reflects the heat up to the kettle, and hey presto, you've got boiling water. We're now back on the road again, and as you can see, the road is unbelievably flat, very straightforward, and there's no traffic apart from some very happy cyclists. And as we progress through the day, I made it to the top of this particular pass. Very proud of myself to make it all the way to the top of these various passes. Um, as you can see, you have to be very well wrapped up to protect yourself from the wind and the sun due to the altitude. And uh, then we arrive in Lasse, a uh, little Lhatse, a little um, Tibetan town. Mainly agricultural people go there. As you can see, every single vehicle in the high street is a tractor or a little truck relating to architecture. And then we go to the top of the Gamso Pass. And as you can see, big celebration there with lots of prayer flags out there to celebrate the uh, the pass. And uh, over the other side, we can start to see the various Himalayan mountain ranges. And uh, how straight is that road? All the way to the Himalayas, all the way to Everest. So, what happened next? What happened to this road? This happens quite a lot in uh, in Tibet. The road uh, landslides out and half the road could quite easily disappear on you. So you have to keep your wits about you and just sort of make sure you're avoiding these little bits and pieces. This is the entrance to the great um, park of Everest. So very important that um, these awesome places within the universe are protected. And here we are to heading, heading towards the base camp for our first trip towards the Everest um, base camp. So as you see, it's pretty barren out there. And then it's straight up to the Pangalar Pass. And as soon as we get to the top, we're able to park our bikes up and celebrate that view. And that view is over towards the Himalayas. As you can see, we've got quite a lot of distance. There we are. Everest in the distance there and all the various other Himalayan peaks. Absolutely amazing that we'll be there in a few days time uh, and we're getting closer and closer all the time. Now we're getting ready, ready, ready for a great downhill. Now this is the end of part two. Watch out for part three, Everest to Kathmandu. And uh, this is David on top of one of the passes. Uh, looking towards Everest and getting ready for the next stage of the adventure. So for more cycling adventures, have a look at the Cycling Granddad. Thank you very much. Bye now.